Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I want to just give you a little bit of an insight into where the cookery school uh, came from and where it is now and everything that's happened sort of in between. So um, many of you who know me will know that I served in the fire brigade. I was in the London fire brigade for 30 years. I retired in 2014. And prior to that, I had a quite a large interest, some would say an obsession, uh, with cured meats, smoked food. I built my own smokers and I've been curing and smoking my own food for quite a long time. And um, just before I retired, I got an opportunity to run some classes for an organisation called Lily, the Low Impact Living Initiative. I'll put a link in the description. And they're a great organisation. Obviously, everything that they do has to be around sustainability and minimal impact on the environment and resources. So I had to devise a food smoking course to meet those criteria. And I'd heard and seen some things on the internet around a cardboard smoker. I developed a, a quick cardboard smoker and we smoked some cheese, we smoked some salmon in there, and we did a few other bits and pieces, which contributed to creating a food smoking course. One of the things I did was um, a smoked trout, a hot smoked trout, and we did that using two roasting trays and a couple of other bits and pieces and some bulldog clips to hold it together, sitting on a camping stove outside, and it was a really good, quick, and easy way to make some uh, smoked trout which was lovely. So all those things together made a little course for people to attend and do some food smoking. Now in the early days of those courses I was delivering those in the straw bale room at Hackney City Farm which is an inner city farm in the north of London. Not brilliantly easy to get to and the parking is absolutely horrendous so I was parked in the actual courtyard of the farm, subjected to ducks and donkeys rubbing up against the van and all sorts of interesting things. But it was a great and friendly place, a real thriving community hub. And I ran the courses there right up until about 2000 and, uh, it must have been around about 2017, 16, 17. But Anyway, <clears throat> I digress. I retired from the fire brigade in 2014 with this interest and currently doing a few courses. And I thought, I know, I don't want to sit on my backside and do nothing after I retire. Uh, too young for that. So I thought I will, you know, um, see if I could run some courses more closely to home. So I was looking around for a venue and I looked around in a little place north of Milton Keynes called Great Linford, which is not far from our house where we live in Milton Keynes. And I found this wonderful uh, pavilion uh, in the art centre in Milton Keynes. And it was the ground floor pavilion. And I spoke to the lady who was letting it out. And she said that this place, you know, we could let it out for, a night. I think it was 90 or 100 pounds uh, every time you wanted to run a course. But she said it, it is currently empty and if you wanted to rent it out on a monthly basis, it would be this much. And I think it was around about 270 or 280 pounds a month. And I thought, ah, you know what, if we could run about three or four or maybe more courses here in a month, different courses, we could actually set ourselves up a little cookery school anyway. Come September 2014, uh, after retiring in the May, I'd spent a bit of time getting everything together. We managed to uh, secure this venue and that turned into Cold Smoking Cookery School. I'll put some pictures up for you to have a look so you can see the setting it was in. It was a beautiful setting. There was a manor house there. There was a thriving art centre. We had wood turners just up from us. Uh, we had ceramics going on. There was uh, people upstairs. We had uh, artists 
um, doing sort of commissioned paintings and things like that. It was a really lovely place to be. Beautiful surroundings. We had the Grand Union Canal running just down by our side. You know, during the summer when we weren't running classes and we were doing prep work, we'd take time to go and sit outside and enjoy the sunshine and just enjoy the um, just enjoy the local environment and um, and it was a beautiful place and we developed the cookery school so the first courses we ran were food smoking <clears throat> meat curing and charcuterie and they were very popular we always sold out they were um, fabulously popular courses attended by the most amazing people and inspirational people and I thought well we could do so much more here and I started contacting a few local foodie people and they introduced me to some other people who had food businesses. One of those was a, a lovely young lady called uh, Hazel and she used to make her own jams and preserves and she still does. Jam Moo Cow is her, her brand and um, she ended up running a jam making class. I had uh, a couple of guys from the chocolate mill in Milton Keynes who made chocolates they came and delivered a chocolate making class. I also had a guy called Nick Gibson, who was a brilliant cider maker. I mean, what that man doesn't know about cider isn't worth knowing about. He now lives down in Kent, but he used to live in Bedford, which is just the sort of next major town across from Milton Keynes. And he was the chief exec of a site charity. Anyway, when he retired from that, he and, and while he was doing that, he used to collect, he used to do like a community apple press and make cider. So he had a real interest in it. Anyway, he ended up running a cider course for me, which was brilliant. We used to have the most amazing cheesemaker. Her name was Louise Tolbert. She used to come along. She used to live down sort of um, in Dorset Way. And uh, she had her own dairy herd with her husband and um, with her husband, John, and they used to, come up together, he'd go off and do some blokey things and she would run the class, the cheese making class, and she used to do that about two or three times a year for me. So we had cheese making. Um, Kevin Palmer, fantastic guy who is heavily into his bushcraft, but also does food fermentation. And he ran the most amazing food fermentation class for me. Again, a really popular class. And we had all these sort of classes going on. We had a pasta making class, which we'd only just started. And that was incredibly popular. And that was um, run by Carmela Serrano Hayes, who has got some fantastic books out there. If you don't know about her or you haven't seen her stuff, I'll put a link to her website in the description. But she makes the most amazing looking pastas and um, she's a real character as well and a fantastic personality to have around the place. Um, very vibrant and she really enthuses and inspires people to do the most amazing things with pasta. One of the courses that I used to run on a weekly basis whenever we had availability, which was most weeks, was a sausage making class. And again, this is something that we ran for years and years uh, from the almost I think from within, I think we had the cookery school for about six months and then we ran our first sausage making class and we got great success with that. And it was a great way of introducing, it's a reasonably cheap course, it was a great way of introducing people to the cookery school and a vast number of those people actually came back and did other courses. So we did a, quite a lot of cross promotion. So we had this absolutely amazing cookery school going and um, I loved going into work it was absolutely fantastic we used to run a small mail order business as well where we did a lot of things like bacon curing salts and Prague powders and um, dry aging bags and gold silver boards and interesting sort of stuff surrounding meat curing and food smoking uh, wood dust and chips etc etc we still do that um, however the pandemic came along in 2020. And interestingly, um, I had done a little bit of pandemic planning in my job in the fire brigade. I used to work at headquarters for a short while between 2004 and 2008, where one of my jobs was 
business continuity and pandemic planning uh, with part of it. I was part of a team doing that work. So I had an insight into pandemic uh, planning and we used to do scenarios or we used to plan scenarios around bird flu. All very interesting. And you'd say, yeah, of course, you know, we would look at the scenarios we had and think, yeah, this is never going to happen. <laughs> so when the news bulletins came out over Christmas 2019, saying that there was this virus in China and there were plans to build a thousand bed hospital, my ears pricked up. I said to Mrs. Cold Smoking, my wife Alison, I said, this looks quite serious. Why would they be building a, uh, why would they be building a hospital for a thousand people? For goodness sake, a thousand people. And, um, and as time went on, more and more news reports came out, outbreaks in different countries around Europe and around the rest of the world. Come March, we have new courses being developed and I just developed a brand new course which I tested out on some mates of mine. Pork pie making class. <laughs> oh, fantastic. We would take eight people, put them in a classroom and we would make two one pound pork pies each for them to take home and enjoy. So we trialled the course. We had our very first course booked for, I think it was the back end of March. And, um, and in the run up to that, so it was fully booked in the run up to that, I was getting phone calls from people saying, what's happening? You know, we've heard this pandemics might be causing problems. And I think one thing you have to appreciate, if you have ever been to our cookery school, you will know that it is quite small and it's almost impossible in there to socially distance, certainly with eight or 12 people in there, it's, it's an impossibility. So I'd had this discussion with Alison and I said, look, if, if push comes to shove, we're just gonna have to close the doors. And the beginning of the year, if any, if any of you ever run courses or have ever, ever planned events, the beginning of the year is quite important because it's when you, set out all your program for the whole year. So we used to sit down with a planner, plotting courses, plotting time away. So we, we, you know, we would have our breaks all planned throughout the year. And, um, and we, we started to sort of upload all that information onto the website, onto the booking site, so that we could then start taking bookings. So we literally had bookings throughout the whole year, up to September. And um, by March, we'd filled out around about 85% of our places, our course places for the whole year, which is spectacular, I have to say. Um, I'm very lucky as well. Um, we did minimal amount of marketing. I, I did a little bit of marketing with the BBC when we had Nadia Hussain, who's, uh, for those of you not in the UK, you wouldn't know about her, but she's, uh, she won Bake Off in the UK, I think it was the first series. And from there, it sprung board into a very successful career. Lovely woman, she came down uh, for one of her series and I taught her how to smoke haddock. Well, when that program went live, literally I sold out all my courses for the rest of the year. I think it went live in 2017, in July. And when that, when that program went out, I think it was late in July, uh, our phones went absolutely mad. Our booking system went bananas and we sold all our course places right up to the end of the year. I even had to sit down with Alison and go through the program and start looking to put more dates in because we were just getting phone call after phone call and email to try and come and visit our cookery school. Probably the best bit of marketing. So off the back of that, that went on for a couple of years and again, in the old days when television programs went out, you would see it once and then it might be repeated in a year's time. But nowadays, you know, the programs are kind of, they, they pop up all over the place. I had someone text me on Christmas day saying that I was actually on television on Christmas day about half an hour before the Queen's speech. So, <laughs> you know, we had fantastic marketing and we didn't pay a penny for it. So we were really quite humbled and very, lucky to have that. Um, but 
it meant that we booked out all our classes right up until the end of the year and we had to start putting more dates in. And I was getting more and more phone calls towards the end of March and I said to Alison, I said, look, if this pans out to be what I think it might be, we, we might have to close the doors. And it was something that I said and um, I didn't really kind of give it a second thought. I, th I just thought, oh, this will last for a couple of months. We'll be all back to normal again and uh, we'll be up and running. How wrong was I? I mean, goodness me, who would have thought it? We ended up cancelling the class for the pork pies <clears throat> and Boris Johnson came on the television and gave us all that message to say, you know, you have to stay at home. We had to close our doors. I sent an email out, started collating data so that I knew exactly who we were postponing. So I didn't cancel any of the classes. What I did is I just delayed them. I said, right, okay, we're gonna pause this. We'll reprogram it for a future date. And I said, well, we'll do this for about three months and see where we are. So that was, I sent out a holding email to all my bookings, let them know. Some people demanded their money back. And I said, yeah, no problem. That's absolutely fine. We'll do that. But we weren't taking any new bookings. <clears throat> so this went on for three months, M March, April, May, June, end of June. Things weren't getting any better. In fact, it was looking more and more like this was going to rumble on. And obviously, you have a cookery school, you have lots and lots of fixed costs. So you have your telephone, your internet, your electric, heating, lighting, etc., etc., and rent, of course, but no income. Um, luckily, we were running the mail order business, and to be fair, when pandemic came, our mail order just went through the roof. I think people were thinking, well, we'll just do this at home. <laughs> we're not going to work. Let's cure some bacon or let's make some smoked salmon. So we did really well for a few months in, um, in the mail order side of things. But that tailed off as pandemic went on and more and more people were not going back to work. Furlough came about. But we were still having these fixed costs and it was proving very, very difficult. So we took the decision in uh, the end of July to close the cookery school. And I'll tell you more about that in the next video.